I felt and saw this presence of something like a ghost. As I was reaching for my keys, something growled at me coming out of the basement. It was bad energy. I was sort of feeling like I was letting Satan out of hell. I saw out of the corner of my eye what I thought was the girl falling off the roof. I, I couldn't think. It was so loud and I was so terrified that I just froze. I'm not calling for that. I'm calling because I'm freaking out here. I felt this presence try to push itself down on top of me very violently. It would not go away. It was just freaking me out. And I look at my arm and it's got a scratch on it. Welcome, everybody, to the Ghost of Greystone podcast. My name is Cleet. And I'm Chris. And we are those Keith brothers, and we are very, very excited to have you here with us tonight. So tonight's program, it's going to be an, an amazing one. We've, okay. We've got spirit voices. We've got strange manifestations. We've got apparitions and black shadows. Wow. Oh, yeah. That should be fun. We That'll have be them great all. Fun. For I, real. I can't wait. This yeah. will be great. So, yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. All right, so this one, uh, tell us about uh, basically that we'll start off, it's the living room. Tonight is about the living room. Tell us oh. a little bit about the living room. Okay. Okay. First of all, the living room is, is the largest room in the mansion. So uh, I won't get into the, a bunch of it, but Frank Kaufman, who was the architect who ended up building this whole mansion and everything there, pretty much in the property, um, had all these plans to build big rooms. Lucy didn't want large rooms. This is the biggest room of the bunch. And this is where they would entertain. And they had a minstrel gallery up above where they would have musicians come and play up above. Yeah, no, that's no, nice. no iPods, right? Do, do you know why she didn't want large rooms? Do you... uh, she just wanted it more intimate. Oh, okay. I mean, they had the money to build whatever they wanted, but right. she didn't want this huge home. It turned out to be 46,000 square feet anyway, 55 rooms, 67 all together. That's pretty big. It's pretty bar pretty big. But um, so uh, it, it's... It, it's a beautiful room, really beautiful, and a, a lot of entertaining was done there. Um, but a lot of paranormal has gone on there mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. and, and and so who are we going to go with the first, first one? is Liddy. Okay, Liddy. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to say about her? Yeah. Well, no, just about the phone call. Uh, again, we recorded these uh, interviews. They were never intended to be played like we're playing them now. Um, they were intended to be transcribed and, for the book. So now when we go back to this, we thought, well, we'll, we'll put these interviews in the show, but then we find out how bad some of them are. This one is one of the worst. It's very high pitched and because Cleet had his recorder on the phone. I think you were recording it from the phone. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But it's great information. Yeah. So, so it, Liddy, um, was a ranger. She started out as a counselor for the kids camp which we'll get into in another episode, but she was a counselor and then she became a ranger. And um, so part of her thing was to, when when uh, film companies would come in, mm -hmm. she would deal with the film companies. And uh, so we're, we're going to talk about some, we, we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, mists and stuff like that. She's going to tell you about, this. this is really weird. This is, I've never heard anything like this, no. by the way. Uh, and this was the only time this happened. Something like this happened in, in my 18 years and in, in having researched a book. This is the only time something like this happened. And it's bizarre. You want to hear it? Yeah, let's go. Okay. When I was a park ranger, I, I can honestly, I, was, I mean, hundreds, I, I, I mean, literally hundreds of times when I, I'd go through with the location scout and I, I'd always make my speech and say, listen, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I need to know anything that's going to be changed in this house because I have to walk the house and I have to tell Ned what's going on. And they're thinking the whole time Ned is like a supervisor. I'm like, no, Ned's the ghost that died. <laughs> yeah, right. And they would be like, what? I'm like, no, this house is haunted and if you want your shoot to go well, you just need to follow my instructions because I'm telling you, it'll go bad. And I, I think it was when they were filming Nixon, um, they had the... It was in the, the room, the, the, again, the, the wooden room, the ballroom to mm -hmm. the left. Um, they switched the, you know, the glass French doors that go out. And they switched the handles on them 
because they were like those push bars, you know, when it was just normal use, but they switched them for the movie to be very antique. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't tell me. And I walk in the next day, and there is just this white cloud that is literally covering the entire bar of where the push bar used to be. It was just this white, like, fog cloud. And the location scout, like, comes in with me, and I was all, see? told you. I said, and that won't go away. So you won't get, like, a good... And they're like, no, it'll go away. And then they would take a picture, and it wouldn't be in the picture. And then, like, ten minutes later, they'd look at the picture, and there was the white cloud. <laughs> like, it was the wildest thing. <laughs> So, no. so you couldn't see that cloud physically. You couldn't see it, but when they took the photos, it was in the photo. Yeah, like, but you could see like it was just. It, I don't know how to explain it. It almost looked like it had saran wrap on it. Wow. When I would physically like, I'd walk in and it looked like there was like this like film on top of it, and you could not. And I would put my hands there, and you couldn't. It didn't feel anything, but you could see it. And they were like, no. You know, there's nothing there. I'm like, okay. And then sure enough, they would take, like, you know, their Polaroid shots of, like, you know, to see if the room was ready and how they wanted it to look and yada, yada, yada. And there'd be, like, a white cloud in the photo. It was a trip. So, yeah. I mean, Ned was definitely there for me. Like, I, you know, I had my own personal relationship with that guy because I, I have never, I remember working there for, like, a month and being told, oh, just wait, it'll happen, it'll happen. I was like, oh, whatever, I don't believe in ghosts. And after that, I was like, I talk to ghosts not living. This is what I do. Okay, just to let you know, at the very end there, um, it, it she said, uh, after that I was okay. I talked to ghosts for a living, and that this is what I do. Right. That's what she right. said. Um, did you want to talk about the uh, when you were filming there about the generators? Would they? Well, a, a lot of times when that would take place, I don't know if we have another episode about that, but. Yeah. It, it it pertains to this as well, but a lot of times when they would shoot there and they would do what they did right there, which was change the doors, the door handles. Another time it was a, a they put a rug on a wall, right? Mm. Right when you walk inside the grand entry, put this huge rug. She walks in and goes, oh no, that's not good. And they go, it, it's it's to, you know, put a decoration on the, you know, but you didn't tell us. And when that happened and with that day, uh, the generators started going down. The big truck generators, mm -hmm. right, from the studios mm -hmm. went down. And they brought in another one. They had one episode uh, of, not our show, but one one time in shooting that I think they went, they went two, two trucks went down until they finally got it through. They shut down for the day and said, we can't work. Wow. Next day came back, trucks work fine. Wow. So it, it, it is a real thing that they can affect energy and and frequency and all this yeah stuff. i'm sure the production company thought she was crazy oh yeah because it's like what do you, they think it's her boss yeah. right ned or whatever um so that's crazy i love that and and, and i think uh, i heard someone else say that the same thing they would mention ned and they go and they think it was the boss and right, it turns right, out right. It's just like they can't believe and they think you're you're out of your mind yeah 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 they really think, i i had some people i talked to they thought i was crazy which but you are well there you go uh, he, well, he's he, he's there, and according to this next story, mm -hmm. uh, it helps verify that. And the next story is Dan. Oh, Dan with me. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. This now, now I can tell you something that actually happened to me with uh, Senior Ranger Dan. Um, we don't want to give his last name Hernandez. Let's not talk about the last Doesn't name. Doesn't matter. It's is he still book. working up here? Do you know? Yes, he is. Why would you say that? Okay, forget mm. it. Anyway, Dan and, and myself, very good friends, probably not after this episode, <laughs> but we have been very good friends. And I ended up going out because I was into the paranormal. I ended up going out and buying these paranormal devices, you know, Spirit Box, the SB7 it's called, mm. Spirit Box, Ovulus, all these things, and the K2. And I said to Dan, look, I want to use these things. Let's go in tonight and just try it. And uh, I've never used them before. So he said, okay, went in, I had a recorder, I gave Dan the recorder, and then I had the spirit box, and Dan had the K2 meter, which is an electromagnetic field meter. So if you put it close to something that's got an energy or electricity to it, it'll, it'll give you a, a, a wave as to how much electricity is coming out of there. So I gave it to Dan, he took it, turned it on, put it towards the switches there, and you could see it go up like that, then he brought it away, and it started going wacky. And I look at him and go, dude, we've got somebody here. 
Now, I was just joking, but it turns out that meter actually worked because we went into the living room. It was about 11 o'clock at night, I think it was, late, dark, really dark, and we had, I turned on the, the spirit box. Well, why don't we get, to, why don't we play it? Okay. Pl let, let Dan, because Dan does talk about that. Okay, let's do it. You let's do it. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. And now another one we're going to talk about was the night I received my, uh, my ghost equipment and you and I decided, let's just try this thing called the spirit box seven. Is that in the living room? Mm -hmm. We started in the living room. Yeah, so you, we stood out here, outside the living room, yeah. and I gave you the, the, what's called a K2 meter, yes. which is electromagnetic field meter. Yeah. I said, here, you hang on to that. I turned it on, and you stood right by the entrance to this door, and I'm looking at the new equipment that I just purchased, trying to figure out. Then I gave you my recorder, I think, and said, yep. turn that on, and I looked over and saw the meter. Mm -hmm was going crazy, right? Right. And I said, you dude, I think we've got somebody here. Just joking, not thinking it was real. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then we turned on the meter and then tell me what you remember that night. We turned on that spirit box. We turned on the spirit box and you're fussing with the frequencies to try to get the perfect frequency. And I believe that you had asked if anybody was here Come, come, come forward. connect through the spirit box. Right. And that night, it was a long day because I think we had the... Uh, I don't know what happened that day, what we were doing that day, but we were here to close up. Right. I'm, I'm thinking it was a uh, cocktail reception down in the garden. Yeah, maybe? yeah, it had to be something like that. So, so it was like, it was about 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. So I remember you asking if anybody was here and we had a couple of voices come through. Okay, so I think I spoiled the whole thing. I just told you everything we just heard, and I apologize for that, but I'm, I get excited about it because it's, this night was, was pretty wild. So I did play the spirit box, and, and something happened that night, and I'm going to talk to you about it after you hear what happened on the spirit box. Is there somebody in here with us? You can talk through this machine. What's your name? Did you hear that? That's incredible. I mean, listen, this is a skeptic, but you you heard that. I mean, that has to uh, be... Oh, no, I heard Ned, but, right. I, but it's like... Yeah, it's not a coincidence. I, I know that was, yeah, yeah you asked the yeah. question I mean, you, and it you, comes through as, I just don't understand how the spirit box works. I get that. It doesn't make any but sense. It, but it did. Yeah. And and it's not, that's not a residual sound. That's, I'm asking a question, it's returning right. the answer. Right. And that was a trip for us. And I looked at Dan and I was like, oh, did he <laughs> just say Ned? And he goes, I think he did. And and uh, so. I have that isolated if you want to hear it. Well, let's hear it now. You want to hear it? Yeah. And, and, and this is treated. Oh, excuse me, one more. Yeah. One more, please. As, Come on, man. Okay, and this is treated. As, as, as. Wow, that's even better. It, it, that's, that's wild. I know, I know you, you, some, they see that on the shows, the ghost shows, stuff like that. And, and, but to me, to have it happen to you and be in that house and know that, and know that that guy is in there and he died in there and ask is there somebody in here? What's you, what's your name? And it comes out and says, "Yeah, it's Ned. wild. It's wild. Wow. It it's was wild. like it was like the holy grail." So, okay. um, so after so we were freaked out by that, and so then I continued on. Mm -hmm. And then let's let's play what I said. Okay. Yeah. Is that you, Ned? What did you guys say at the end there? I said, do you say Ned and dances? I think no, so. No, Hugh. Hugh. Yes. He yeah. Said, yeah. He said Hugh. No. Oh. Do you have that isolated? Uh, yes. Wait, can we hear that? Come 
on. I mean, that is incredible. That I know. to me, that what a night, man. And we looked at each other just like we connected with them. And we won't go back through it again, but but if you listen to that, you can actually hear him say Ned several times. Mm-hmm. One's really low. It's like Ned. And then he comes, is that you? Ned. And then in a different voice, you. So you can tell they're two different voices. How do they have a voice? I don't know, but it was there that night. It doesn't make any sense to it, me. It, it, well, it doesn't None. to me either, but we know it to be true. And th- that night was incredible. And, and uh, I'm, I'm so happy I have that. I'm so happy I recorded that. So Dan was holding the recorder. It was yeah, so great. That was excellent. Yeah, really exciting. Peekaboo. What? <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? I'm, I'm talking about Juan when he walked into the room. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking to me. No, it, that it, was frightening. For that was more frightening than Ned. Oh, uh, well. Okay. Um, I'm yes. trying to spice it up. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, so Juan Juan Andrade, who is a senior supervisor ranger, uh, who is is he still working up there? Do you know? I refuse to comment. Wow. The answer is yes. yes. Okay, so what's the big deal? He is up there, and tell him I said hello. Will you do that for me? He's up there, and he had an evening, I believe it was UCLA, just off the top of my head, that was coming in. It was going to be like a walkthrough that he was going to do, and things had been happening. So I think we're going to get into that right now. We're going to talk about, he will talk about what uh, what was going on at that time. Okay. Okay. I believe it was noon time. There, there was a walk or a site visit for an upcoming event for UCLA. I met two people at the entrance of the mansion and I let them inside the mansion. And while we were walking on the first floor uh, near one of the alcoves, I thought I saw like a white something on the ceiling uh, above one of the lights constants. So I stepped back to see if I could see it again. I, I didn't. This is the first floor uh, Grand yes. Hall West alcove. Is that correct? With all the photos in it? Yes. Okay. And then several minutes later, Anthony, uh, the sound guy shows up. We were waiting for him and we go inside the living room. And while in the living room, I looked up. I was right underneath the minstrel gallery. I looked up and I saw a black mass. Um, It was round. Uh, I didn't see everything. It almost like it had peeked down to see who was down there. And then it left. But it was just a complete round mass. Like like I like I didn't see the complete form of it. Um, after that, um, I left because we were done with the inside, and I didn't go back into the mansion until later on when I was locking everything up. Was the mass solid, or could you see through it? No, it was solid black. Solid black, and so if you're standing, you had to be standing in further in. The living room in order to look up to the menstrual gallery, right? No, I was right underneath it. So where did you see this then? Um, on the edge. Oh, so you looked up and it looked like it peeked over that, that the, I see. Yes. The edge. And then it went away. And did you feel anything, any <clears throat> energy from it or anything? I did feel like, before I saw either thing, I did feel like there was something there. Like there was something following us. So just a feeling of that, not energy, just a feeling of Just something. a feeling of something following us. Okay. And that's when I saw the light, and that's when I saw the black mass. The two that were with you, Anthony and the other woman for this event, they didn't see it? No, they didn't see it. So when you see that, what goes through your head? Um, I feel like something is trying to get my attention, and they want to see... They want to see me, or they want me to see them. That's what I feel. And I know this is way out there, but who? what do you think that is? You've, you've had this before, haven't you? Yes. Um, I just think it's a, a, a spirit or some type of energy that 
wants me to know that they're there, wants me to acknowledge them, or they're just curious about me. Because I don't, I don't feel scared. I just okay. That's my question: positive or negative? Neither. Oh, okay. Neither. I just feel that there's something there. Is that wild? One is a very straight shooter. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. want the stuff to happen necessarily. No. He's always in the mansion and something is always going on yeah, still. He, and he has the gift. And that, again, and we've talked about that probably with Juan already. But, but the gift is? The gift is abilities to feel, sense, hear, smell, all that stuff. And and he's had things, which I I, I can't remember the last couple of episodes, but he knew he was going to be working up a Greystone. When he was a child. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Yes. I remember hearing that okay. when we were doing that. So, I mean, I don't know if we discussed that, uh, but no. his his mother worked for the Doheny's down by USC at their house there. Mm. And uh, I, I'm not sure what she did at the house there, but and, and Juan would go there and visit her at that house when he was a little boy. And he always, he had dreams. He always knew he was going to work at a place that had these um, brick uh, staircases and, and, and all this stuff that, that, uh, on the outside with grass and everything. And once he applied, he had no idea. He applied for, to be a, a, right. a ranger. Right. And when he got the job, he walked around and went, oh my God, this is what was in my dream. So it was almost like he was meant to be, it's almost like it called him there and he does have the gift. So just like Steve Clark and Luz Rodriguez, who's in here and even Martin, they, are constantly, the, the ghosts are trying to connect with them. That's why he said, I think they're just trying to connect with me. But I got to tell you, black mass, not good. <laughs> it really, no, seriously. That's not, I mean, you see, from what I... Just because it's black? Well, from what I have seen and, and read about and all this, white it, it is okay. It's not, it's not a male, malevolent. Yeah. But... Black masses are only a problem. Yeah. I mean, I can get into that well, big time. We yeah, we've had a few more of those. Yeah, we have some other yeah. ones, but but boy, oh boy, let me tell you something. For him to say, well, I looked up, because when you walk into the mansion, there's an overhead, and up above that overhead is the minstrel gallery where people right. would play the music, right? right? If you walk a little further, now you're out from that underhang, and he looked up there, and the thing looks over at Are you kidding me? No, I would be I would be out. Soiled. Just, I'm soiled. Right off the bat. Thank you. I'm, 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 I'm like... But he didn't leave. He didn't run out, no. or it's normal to him. No, but maybe that's... I mean, he had things happen to him at his house. I'm not going to get into it. Okay. All right. Wow. Crazy, um, crazy. The next one is... There's, there's more? more? One of the most bizarre stories. Uh, this is the uh, Julie Stalka. Oh, this this is this. That's right. The living room. Absolutely bizarre. This is pretty trippy, and 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 I'll, I'm not going to ruin it for you. As I do, do not the, ruin it. I, I'll try not to. <laughs> but just say a little bit, okay, and then they can hear the story. Just a little bit. Julie mm -hmm. went there to take photos. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Do we need more? Well, uh, I'm trying not to ruin it. No, for it, about her her friend. She was going there to take yeah, photos. Yeah, of her, her her girlfriend's uh, friend is getting married, so she was going to do like engagement photos. That's all. They're just going to go up there for fun. They didn't know that they couldn't do. She's that. She's not a professional photographer. No. She just went with her ca a good camera yeah. to take some photos. Yeah, and so they took photos. So let's let's find out what happened after she took the photos. All right, all righty. Then here's the craziest part. Somebody goes, you can't have a. You can't have a um, a professional camera, and I was like, I'm so sorry. You, he goes, they you have to have a license. Was, oh, this was this John the Ranger, Ranger. John? I don't really remember who it was that okay. told like told me, yeah. but um, he said you can't have a camera like that, and I said I'm so sorry, and I, that was the last picture on my camera. Wow, really? That's what was so weird about it. So then I got home. I uploaded some pictures. I went out to eat with my girlfriends, and all of a sudden my phone started ringing, and they're like, uh, "Where's the original? Where's the, the card, the memory card?" And I was like, "Well, I think it's still on the computer." So I was like, "Called Daryl." I was like, "Honey, go look, go look, go look." And he, I didn't know what was happening. I was having dinner with my friends, and they're like, "Look over your left shoulder. Look over the left shoulder of Brittany." And I was like. And of course, I'm at dinner, and I'm like, oh my god! Of course, I could barely eat my dinner after that because I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. But he was at home, so he showed the original shot, like, just to see, like, 
you know, if somebody like superimposed it maybe on Facebook, you know how people can yeah. do all that stuff, mm -hmm. but no, it's on the memory card. Mm -hmm. So now, isn't that wild? So go ahead. Well, it, she didn't describe what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll and, get into that. Yeah. The, 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 the background talking that's, they do like bike tours. This, this was up at Greystone. We have this conversation. So you're hearing the bike tour. Yeah. The there's going to be all that. The, yeah. the plane flying over air, yeah, everything yeah. we've heard is going to, yeah. It's yeah. not coming from here. Yeah. So the studio. Right. So, so she takes this photo and the girl is standing there and over this, this, the, uh, uh, what was it? Bridget, Bridget, I think was her name. Her over her left shoulder. Uh, I think it was Brittany. Well, Brittany, that's right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, over her left shoulder is this face. Now, pareidolia, I think is what it's called when you look at a, uh, clouds in the sky and you go, oh my God, that looks like... Really? Yeah. yeah pareidolia? Yeah. I, think that's I don't what it's think called. I've ever heard that yeah. word. Yeah. Okay. Get I'm going to look it get up. In the paranormal world, uh, you'll hear all these things. I don't know. I mean, you look in the sky and it looks like you go, oh my God, that looks like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't know, somebody. Santa Claus. Whatever. So... Uh, this though, when you look at it over her shoulder, it looks like a photograph of Ned, dark hair, mustache, kind of glaring a little bit. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's there. And we tried to recreate. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we ended up, uh, uh, Chris and myself, I went inside the house and had somebody stand there, and we could see like what uh, leaded glass window, right? So I put my head where that one is, and I'd have to be way in the because I was too tall, so I'd have to keep going further back from the camera to where it got lower and lower. And by then, there's no way you'd even no. see me. No, you couldn't. So it, 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 it's. Uh, I, yeah, it, it it it's startling how much it looks like. Yeah, but I'm thinking it's maybe. Palm prints. Well, that's I'm sorry. It's like something. pareidolia. That's when you, when you oh, see something, you yeah. go, "I can." That looks like Ned. But it, but it sure does. But it really, you know, maybe it wasn't. But boy, oh boy. Yeah. It and, and imagine uh, if there. Let's say there's a face on there from a handprint, or whatever. What are the chances it has a mustache and it looks like dark hair? Right. Right. And when you put the photograph of Ned up next to it, it looks like Ned. Yeah. And and listen. Yeah. And by the way. As you've heard before with Luz, she has seen him in the card room mm -hmm. when she was cleaning the windows. Mm -hmm. She saw him inside the house. So what's to say he wasn't in there when mm -hmm. they were taking the photos? Right. It was during the day, but so was Luz right. during the day. Clean. Right. So okay. we don't know. Uh, let's listen to her husband, Daryl. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then Brittany calls me and goes, oh my God, D. She calls me D. She goes, what's wrong with this picture? She goes, what's in this picture? I go, what are you talking about? She goes, look over my left shoulder. And then that's when I said, oh, my God. And I'm like, freaking out. I said, hey, let me run into the office and go on the Mac and look at the, the original from the SD card because I wanted to see if it was, I don't know, on the iPhone, something came up weird on the, I don't know. You know, I was just curious. Because I think she snapped a screenshot of it from whatever on the phone and sent it to me and it goes, look at this in the text. So that's when I went to the computer, looked at it from the memory card mm. and pulled it up and zoomed in. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's on this one, too. It's all, it's still there. And we're freaking out. We're like, ah! <laughs> but you know, a lot of times in things like this, people do try to justify. We've talked about that before, and we will talk about it through all these episodes. Everybody just goes, wait a minute. Was that done right. by somebody on, right. on online or whatever? But a lot of times, it just is. It is what it is. There, there's a face there. There's a sound there. There's a black shadow up above. There's saran wrap looking stuff on the door. It happens. This place is the real deal. And that's what's so exciting. And I'm, I'm really thrilled that, that we can, that you hear these people, how they talk about their, their, uh, their paranormal uh, incidents. So, right. Yeah. Uh, the last thing we have here mm -hmm. is actually the, the, the Mystery sound of the show, oh, but yes. yeah. uh, we should describe, talk about how this happened. Okay. Um, after we can listen to Che, uh, you and Che walking in, and then we can discuss it if you want. Yeah, well, let's just listen to it, and, th and then I'll tell you, I'll tell you what you're hearing. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listen to it's it. It's more interesting. Yeah. 2015, and there's no wind, nothing outside. Okay, it's a quiet night. We may have some cars that come by from the cleaner or Che. Che will honk when he comes by and we'll know it's him. Enjoy your night.
Okay. Explain to them <laughs> exactly what that REM pod is and how okay. it works and okay. all that. So, God, I should have it here with me. Uh, yeah. The, the REM pod is is a device that has an antenna on it that uh, electromagnetic field and energy, when you come close to it, it makes those sounds that you heard, right? So, uh, and it's and, just and, a round, a round, like a box, only it's round. Yeah. It's yeah. just tiny. Yeah. And, 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 and there's lights on the top that light up when you come close to it. So Che was in there with me that night. I left, I'm sure I left a recorder along with other things. And we ended up, um, <clears throat> excuse me, putting the REM pod in the portal area. I think we just, did we discuss the portal? No. Uh, all right. It's, it's like a highway for the, the spirits. We'll, and we'll, we'll get into that in, in, a, in an upcoming episode. Big but, time. Yeah. On the second floor landing. So we put the REM pod there. And it didn't go off. You, there was, we we're walking down the stairs. And what I'm saying is, so it's, it, there's no wind tonight. It's a quiet night. Uh, you'll probably hear maybe the cleaner, which is the guy who comes and cleans the restroom. Oh, is that what you were saying? Yeah, I couldn't understand. Saying. Yeah, yeah. The cleaner and, and Che will honk as he leaves. So we, we used to do that so that we knew the park is empty. Mm, mm. So if I left and I was the last person or whatever, I'd go by for, just for myself. Bim, bim driving by the mansion, driving out mm. so that I knew nobody's left in the park. So that's what I'm saying. And we get down to the grand hall and I'm just saying like acting as if there are spirits there. And I say, have a good night. And it lights up like it's responding to me. And, and Shay was freaked because he doesn't like to be in there anyway. Well, he did you didn't hear it when you were walking out. No. Right? Because you no. guys, you could hear you guys way at the end of the hallway. Yeah. yeah. And then you hear it go off after you said, have a nice evening. Yeah. I said, so you have a good night, whatever it is. Beep. And then I say, thank you. Beep. It goes to another, yeah. uh, you know, okay. sound. But w what we did the other day yeah. is we tested it here. Uh -huh. Remember? Yeah. And that really... It's very bizarre because if you put your hand near the little antenna, it goes off. The lights go on and all this stuff. You can do it anywhere around. Mm -hmm. But when you touch the antenna, it gets that really high pitch. And that's then, the only time it does it. That's right. And then more lights go. So all four lights yeah, light, lit up. Yeah. So if you come close to it, whatever angle you're at, that light will go up, will turn oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. When you do this. Yeah. It's, okay. But when you touch that antenna... All the all the lights come on and the sound gets different and that's what we're hearing and that's what we heard at that yeah. the highest pitch was yeah. it being touched yes yeah uh, let's hear it again can we hear it again do you want to hear that whole thing J yeah just yeah and then we'll hear the uh, yeah 2015 and there's no wind nothing outside okay it's a quiet night we may have some cars that come by from the cleaner or Che Che will honk when he comes by and we'll know it's him. Enjoy your night. That. Thank you. It's that last one is 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 one near, but that other one, that really yeah, high yeah. pitch is when it's touched. It's like it's gripped. Yeah. But the fact that I say thank you and it gives another, it, it, it yeah, almost like it's answering you. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah. play it one more time, but this is just the end. Okay. Enjoy your night. And, and you she, guys are walking out, right? Yeah, and we're walking out, and Che goes, let's get out of here. Because <laughs> that, that's how he was. He was so afraid. And I, and I get it. I get it. I, I, I had gone in that house before by myself. And it, by myself, late at night, you, it's, you, you freak yourself yeah, yeah. out. Because be, here's the deal, and, and we'll, I'll let you move on. But here, here's the deal. I know all the stories. I know everything that's happened to all the people that have come to me and told me all these horrible or, or freaky or you know, wacky stuff. So when I'm in that house, even, even today, if I go in, you know, if I'm walking and doing whatever I'm doing, sometimes I'll give a tour still here and there, rarely. But, but if I do, once I get up to that front door, all these stories hit me because I know everything that's happened. Every time you walk into any room... There's a myriad of stories that have gone on. Well, there were almost over, there were over 300 that, right. that that came to me. So so when I walk in a room, everywhere I look, something has happened. Right. Um, and this w with the REM pod, uh, 
is amazing. And and I had another night that in the second floor landing, same thing. It never went off. Mm. Did you just sit there and wait, or well, no? I, I was gone. Oh, you recorded. I left it there. It never. It would, and then it would stop for a second and go and go and go. I I, I sent a clip to that to Chris Fleming, who's a very well known investigator who uh, has been on all the the shows and stuff like that because he became a friend. And I said, what do you make of this? It went all night. And he said, his answer was, maybe there's something with the battery. Well, if something's with the battery, it's just going to die. This Uh, was, but you know where it was placed? It was placed in the portal. mm. Yeah. And it was literally going the entire time? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't, the, the recording, it just wouldn't stop. And finally, I was going, like, good Lord, it was driving me nuts. I was listening to it, and it's like, eh, it keeps going. And you know what? One other thing, and, and I'm, this is just off the book, but one other thing. I had a night with Patrick, Ranger Patrick, that we went in there, and we put that, that REM pod. That was a wild night, too. We put the REM pod in the portal, and uh, it went off. And I'm looking at it, and he looks at me, and I go, is somebody here with us? And we're trying to connect and, and see if they'll do that, you know, put the... It kept going. It just kept going. Beep. And, and he's looking at me. I go, go over there and move it to the right. And he walks over there and with his foot, he slides it to the right. It's still in the portal, though. Still keeps going. And he looks back at me. I go, more. Slides it even more. Still close to the portal. And then I say, slide it into the east hall. And he and he puts it with his foot. He goes, Beep. stops. Oh. So it might be that the one you just heard has nothing to do with this because you, it was specific to our question. Right. But it might be those portals, their energy, man, their energy coming in and out. It's a highway for spirits to come and go. And it just may be a thing where spirits are coming in. So uh, you're getting that frequency so or energy. It, okay. So it wouldn't be the electrical outlets... Because then it would go off all the time if it was in that area. Yeah, right? no, 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 no. Constantly. And, and, and the outlets, especially in the portal, I don't even think there's an outlet in the portal. It's in the middle of mm. it's in the middle of the second floor landing. Mm. So that that wouldn't work. Okay. So that's right. yeah, a good good question. Yeah, though. well thank you. Okay. Uh where are we, that, my friend? That's it for this show. Oh that's, wow. That was the mystery. We're sound. done. Okay. Um, make sure, thank you for joining us, first of yep. all, but make sure you subscribe, like, ring the bell, whatever you need to do to follow us. <laughs> all those things. And if you have any comments about the show, uh, we'd love to hear them. Leave them below. However, if you don't want to leave a comment or you need to get a hold of us, but you don't want everybody else reading it, feel free to go to our website, ghostsofgraystone.com, and um, leave a message there. We'll get back to you for sure. Um, and also... Uh, the teaser for next week oh is murder room oh murder room well what well what more need i say yeah no, yeah it's, it's it, i'll tell you what thanks for being here uh but next week it, it's it's kind of gruesome so just to, just a warning honestly being honest about we're, we're going right. to talk about what took place that we night. will talk about it and uh my feelings uh, other people's feelings about what took place and why it took place. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. We'll, we'll, we'll get into all right, that stuff. Right. And along with other stories that have taken place. So it's not just that there are murder-suicides. It was like poltergeist activity and spirit sounds, apparition. All that stuff has... Yeah, apparitions, especially with Juan. All those things have taken That's place. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, have taken place inside the murder room. So... Uh, I hope you stay tuned and you come, you visit us again and we can share this horrible, horrible tragedy with you. Okay? And remember. Yeah. Just remember. Honestly. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. A hundred horses in five freight trains Couldn't drag me into that early grave I've cashed in the mistakes I've made While God rode shotgun from a million miles away I don't wake in sorrow, I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay, I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget what I know and what they say
Till the trail grows cold Where the hillsides burn Amber and smoke The sheep and the shepherd Are lost on different roads Blinded by hate Blinded by hope I don't wake in sorrow I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay This is